Hi guys, and welcome to another video. And like the PowerBook G3 video before this one, we're going to be redoing another video, and this time it's going to be about the VIO PCG FX150. Unfortunately, a bit of a change from last time, this will not be a complete video, as between then and now, this has developed a bit of an issue, and we'll get to that when we boot it up. So, for right now, this is just going to be a tour of the hardware and more of a call for advice. As we can see, this thing is thicker than a snicker, as is par for the course for a 90s era laptop. Not much here, just, you know, standard latch, opens right up. Here we have your standard cart of media ports, your audio ports here, with an interesting addition, Firewire 400, or Sunny would prefer you to call it the iLink port. And it's really just a Firewire 400 port without the power pins, or it's actually called a 4-pin Firewire port. Next to that, you have dual PCMCIA slots. I'm not sure what type these are, but they're here, and one of the blanks is missing, unfortunately. Next to that, we've got the battery slot, which is interesting, as the battery itself is not part of the chassis. This is just a door. So, as you can see, it opens right up. Boop. There we go. I also failed to mention the screw right here, but we're going to come back to that later. The astute among you will immediately notice something not quite right here, and that's because I've swapped this DVD drive out with one from a scrap Dell Inspiron that just didn't work. That's because the one that was in this machine, unfortunately, did not work, and yes, it was originally a DVD drive in here. The machine was pretty well equipped. It had issues reading discs, and it would just take forever to load basic stuff, so out it went. Besides that, we have a floppy drive here that works perfectly fine for 720k discs, which is, makes this a perfect bridge machine for older floppy-only machines and older machines that only take 720k discs. Now, around back, we have some amenities that you normally don't see on older laptops like this. We got USB, which this is a 2000, I believe, beginning of the 2000s laptops. I mean, that's not terribly uncommon. But, is this what I think it is? Why, yes. Yes, it is an Ethernet port. That made my day when I saw it because it makes this thing super easy to get on a network and get data on and off of it once you get it, the network drivers installed. A lot of older laptops like this would opt for a modem only configuration, which we do have here, yay. But besides that, we have your standard ports here, serial parallel and VGA with power over here. Also to note, you may see the remnants of where a door would have been here. Guess this thing did not fare as well as the PowerBook G3 did on that department. And we got a little air vent here. On the bottom, this is an original product key. Do not steal this, okay? Okay, as long as you promise. Anyway, the rubber feet are just completely degraded at this point. They've become a rubber gooey mass. We've got two flip out feet here to raise the keyboard and we've got a docking port here and under here is the RAM and CMOS battery and under here is the modem card. So let's go ahead and flip open the laptop now. For such an old laptop this thing actually has a really tight hinge on it like pretty good deal. I mean, I guess it means one less thing to really worry about going wrong on this thing. So, you may remember in my PowerBook video that I lamented the keyboard feeling cheap and having a metric ton of flex to it. Shockingly, that is not as present in the VIO. The keyboard does flex a little and has some rattle to it, but it's nowhere near as bad. Pretty interesting. Just to demonstrate real quick, Though Apple did really get its act together with the build quality post PowerBook G4 Titanium because that thing was a stinker with its hinges and such. Now you may remember that screw I said we'd come back to. Well, let's go ahead and remove that and we'll jump cut to when it's actually removed. Now I will show you how easy this thing is to service. Slide this over. Fortunately, it will catch on this DVD drive, but just quickly push it down out of the way and off this whole panel comes this just pulls right out friction fit in there there's your speakers and power board and here's your keyboard pretty easy and then we can just pull the keyboard out by doing this 
and your keyboard's out. And oh look, there's your hard drive. It's literally just sitting right in front of you. It's a refreshing thing to see, since in a lot of older laptops, a hard drive can require just a ton of disassembly to get to. But in this machine, it's right there, right under the keyboard, and it's super easy to replace. Sadly, I've already had to do this once, and you can't see it from here. There's actually an Apple logo on this drive because it came out of a uh, older Apple laptop, and this drive's got some issues, but it works for right now, I guess. So, and it stays, and so I may need to just dig in here and do this all over again. All right, you may probably have guessed that I'm just kind of stalling at this point, and I don't want to boot this machine because well, we can't really go much farther, so let's get it back together and we'll boot the machine right up. It's going to complain about the CMOS battery because I unfortunately had to liberate it for something else. But as we can see, or we should have been able to see here, oh, I guess I'll just tell you, it is a Pentium 3 laptop, so it's got some power behind it, which is quite nice. Anyway, everything is looking nice so far, but as you will see when we get into the OS, things will kind of take a turn for the worse. All right, we're finally booting up. Oh, that thing is running slow. I think the hard drive is actually kind of about to breathe its last, which is unfortunate, but I do believe I have some spares I can rob out of other computers. Well, this is already going kind of off script because <laughs> I kind of planned this out, but this was a this is a new problem It seems to be just completely screwed at this point. So I'm gonna assume the hard drive is just completely shot at this point because it's just not having a good time So that pretty much ends this video very prematurely so Maybe in a future video we'll look at reviving this thing and bring it back to its former glory. But until then, I will see you guys later.